I always viewed binoculars as being more the first step on a long and exciting journey that is astronomy than an instrument to accompany my observing sessions with my main telescope. To me, a pair of binoculars was like the first piece of equipment you buy to learn about this hobby before you move on to a more serious setup based on a telescope with accessories and eyepieces and so on. And boy, I was wrong. Let me tell you why. Hi, I'm Ogdan Damian and welcome to BT Observatory. In the past, I reviewed a bunch of stuff, starting from eyepieces and telescopes to mounts and storage cases, but I have never taken a deeper look at binoculars. Well, that changes today. As a couple of weeks ago, I got the SkyMaster 15 by 70 binoculars from Celestron, and since then I was able to test it thoroughly. Celestron is a popular US-based company when it comes to astronomy equipment. They sell telescopes, eyepieces and all sorts of accessories. The company was originally founded in 1955 by Tom Johnson in Torrance, California, under the company name Valor Electronics. And after a rather interesting history and a few ownership changes, Celestron ended up partnering with Sinta Technology Corporation of Taiwan in 2005. You may have heard about Sinta before. That is because they are the parent company and manufacturer for Skywatcher and Orion products as well. All this means that the product manufacturing is done by Sinta and the equipment is then sold under the Celestron name across the world. The Celestron's range of binoculars dedicated to astronomy enthusiasts is called SkyMaster and it includes 12 models starting with the portable but premium 8x56 DX model and moving all the way up the range to the huge and heavy 25x100 option. Besides the normal versions, there are a couple of Zoom and Pro class binoculars in the SkyMaster lineup as well. All models are of Poro design and come with big quality BAK4 prisms to allow for best possible light transmission. Here it's important to note that the Pro versions come with slightly better optics and build quality compared to the normal SkyMaster models. The biggest differences being that the lenses of the Pro models are fully multi-coated for better contrast and for eliminating internal reflections. Also, the housing is nitrogen purged to prevent the internal lenses from fogging up due to temperature differences or when using the binoculars in damp conditions. And the third difference is that the housing is also waterproof, so you can use it in all weather conditions. In today's video, we are going to take a deeper look at the SkyMaster 15x70. It features a magnification of 15x and a 70mm wide diameter for the objective lenses. As with all the other models in this lineup, this one also uses quality prisms made out of PAK for glass and are arranged in a poro design. If you don't already know, there are two main types of binoculars. The ones that employ a roof prism and binoculars that use poro prisms. Both have pros and cons, with the poro prism version being the simpler and more affordable option that can produce high quality images. Roof prism binoculars are more complex and therefore more expensive while being able to produce even better images. If you are interested in a video where I go over the basics for binoculars, let me know in the comments below. Now let's get back to the SkyMaster. It comes in a nicely designed box that includes a black soft carrying case that also has a bit of padding to it, the SkyMaster itself, a black neck strap, a plastic tripod adapter for plates with a quarter inch screws, 
a fine microfiber cloth and a user manual with instructions in multiple languages. The SkyMaster itself comes with dust caps for both the objective and the eyepiece lenses. As mentioned before, the objective lenses are 70 mm wide and are multi-coated. Not fully multi-coated, only multi-coated. What this means is that not all lens surfaces are coated with multiple layers of material, only some of them. In this case, it looks like only the front surfaces are coated. This pair of binoculars offer an angular field of view of 4.4 degrees, 18 mm of eye relief and 4.5 mm for the exit pupil. The focal length being 280 mm, making the SkyMaster an F4 pair of binoculars. Moving further towards the back of the binoculars, we see the logo cap in the middle. Unscrewing this cap will expose the mounting point for the tripod adapter. Then there is this nice and big focusing wheel that is very smooth and precise and can be reached by my medium length fingers without a problem when holding up the binoculars. Then come two eyepieces that feature two decently large lenses with generous rubber eye cups that in combination with the long eye relief allow for a very comfortable viewing experience. Here both lenses are multi-coated as well. The right eyepiece also turns, letting you select the diopter value from minus four to plus eight in a smooth and stepless way. The adjustment for the interpupillary distance or IPD is done in a classic way by moving the two halves of the device about the hinge in the middle. This hinge is very firm and sturdy, contributing to the overall good quality impression for this pair of binoculars. All right, so what's the viewing experience with the SkyMaster? Pretty good actually, but before I go into the details, I want to go over the testing conditions real quick. I got these binoculars two weeks ago. And since then, I was able to test it on multiple nights with seeing conditions ranging from fair to good. The light pollution in my area is about a four on a bottle scale. I've tested the SkyMaster handheld and in combination with a lightweight tripod, the one that I usually use with my camera. All right. So let's start with image quality. The views delivered by the SkyMaster are bright, sharp and with good contrast. To my eyes, the overall image quality is better on the SkyMaster than it was on my old MID ETX70 telescope when used in combination with the Supply 25mm Prusel eyepiece. And this really impressed me. Also, the views are, for the most part, without any disturbing aberrations. Some chromatic aberrations are visible, but nothing that really bothers me. Just a normal amount you see in every entry-level refracting optical instrument. I really enjoyed the sharpness of the image it delivered, with the stars appearing like perfect points of light. Here it's important to note that while the field of view is flat, there are some aberrations right at the edge of the field of view, maybe the last 10% or so. There, the stars that are normally perfect points of light get a bit fuzzy, but this isn't a deal breaker by any means, just something to maybe keep in mind when comparing binoculars. The views during land-based daytime observations are sharp and with good levels of contrast. The amount of chromatic aberrations, however, increases a bit, especially in high contrast situations. This is due to the fact that a lot more light is present now than during the night, which makes lens and coating imperfections more visible. Build quality-wise, the SkyMaster features an all-metal housing coated in a nice rubbery material that not only feels nice to the touch, but also offers very good grip levels. In general, the SkyMaster has a quality feel to it. There is nothing loose on it. Everything is tight and well put together, which is really nice. 
The Sky Master comes in at 1361 grams, which is less than I expected from such a big pair of binoculars. Nonetheless, 1.3 kilograms or 3 pounds is no featherweight when it comes to holding something in hand and pointing it up while observing for longer periods of time. Already after several seconds, I start to feel its weight resulting in accentuated hand movements which turn into shaking after a minute or so of constant observing, requiring me to put it down for a bit before resuming with my observations. At this point, it might be worth considering using a tripod instead. And this leads me to the biggest issue I had with this pair of binoculars. The included adapter for the tripod is useless. It's made completely out of plastic, which in itself is not a bad thing. But if you attach it to the binoculars and then put it on a mount or tripod, it shakes and wobbles at the faintest touch. And it's not like the wobble dies down immediately. Oh no! It keeps on wobbling for at least a few seconds, rendering the binoculars unusable during this time. So Celestron, if you are watching this, please replace the included tripod adapter with a more stable metal one, like this one from Omegon, which is made out of metal and does not wobble at all. But this is only a small issue for an otherwise very compelling package. The 15 by 70 Skymaster from Celestron not only showed me that it can offer better images than some entry-level refractors, but it can do this in an uncomplicated and easy-to-use way. No need for extra eyepieces or accessories, you just pick it up and point it up. And if you are more experienced and already own a main telescope, then a good pair of binoculars like the Skymaster can make a useful companion for wider views of the night sky during your observing sessions. Now, to be fair, I should mention that if you only have the binoculars with you during observations and want to take in all the details when looking at the moon, for example, then you will need to do something about stabilizing the device like getting a basic tripod and a better tripod adapter. Otherwise, the slight hand movements, which are natural, will make studying any details for more than a few seconds at a time impossible. But for casual and simple stargazing at home, from the backyard or on the go, the Skymaster is a nice and helpful instrument for this job. Anyway, these were my impressions of the 15 by 70 Skymaster from Celestron. And now I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.